Hey guys. So tonight I've got something pretty cool here. This is uh, one of those special edition uh, Pokemon Center Game Boy Colors. Uh, but there is something pretty unique about this Game Boy Color in particular. Um, that is to say it is not legitimate. It is a reproduction housing. Uh, but I want to do a video with this, but there are a few things I have to do to this before I can do the video that I plan on doing. Uh, namely, the Game Boy Color that is physically inside of here right now is already modified, and I, I don't know, kind of want to pull a sneaky on you and uh, use a Game Boy Color that's I've obviously not already f messed with. Uh, and also, you know, i got to swap out that IR window and the power switch and stuff. Uh, but otherwise does work. It is pretty decent. Uh, it is brand new aftermarket. It still has the plastic on. I haven't peeled that off yet. I'll, I'll save that for in a bit. Um, long story short, I want to do a video on uh, another Game Boy backlight mod and um, basically what I have left is not looking good. There's nothing wrong with this Game Boy color right here except that the shell itself is really rather gross and there's only so much I can do to clean it up. Um, this thing is severely yellowed and it's not a very satisfying color. I'm not liking it anyway. So I'd rather do something fun instead. But anyway, I'm just going to be reshelling a Game Boy. Nothing, nothing too complicated here. In fact, I'm still probably going to upload this video, but I am going to leave it unlisted. So you found your way here. Congratulations. You actually read the description of a video. Okay. So is this the right Game Boy Color? No, it's not. Shoot. I gotta do another one. Because this is the one that I tried to backlight with a McWill kit and it was uh, it was not having it. So, we're not going to use this Game Boy Color. Well, darn. That's okay, I got one more. Really, I gotta let this thing rattle around in my backpack or something. The uh, Pokemon one. It looks too pristine. Okay, there we go. We might have to fall back to this motherboard though, even though it's got solder on some of the uh, some of the grounds. Because my only other Game Boy Color is this one right here. And this one's even worse than the teal, but I think the actual PCB itself is, is okay. Because I don't think the PCB that's in this Game Boy Color is the PCB that came in this Game Boy Color. Like, I think I swapped it out with uh, that Atomic Purple one that I did the Taobao mod on. And yeah, that looks a lot better. Pretty sure these battery terminals are not original. But uh that should be fine. I'm only saying that because I'm staring right at them. And I can see that one of them's crooked. But it should be good enough. Let's see. No, 
Now, I don't remember why. Oh, that's why. Damn it. This one's broken too. There's a broken bale on the connector. Well, that's fine. I suppose it's better. Oh, and I swapped out the volume potentiometer on this one. Shoot. Okay, well, plan B. Let's take this one apart. The motherboard that is in this one is uh, actually perfectly fine. I'm just going to have to end up undoing a mod that I did. But it's okay, because that mod doesn't actually do anything anymore. That screw hole is so tight. So, just so I'm talking about something while I'm unscrewing this, um, I personally have no problem with these reproduction shells. I think it's absolutely fantastic that they're out there and that people are making them for. Um, for everyone else who doesn't want to spend uh, $200 on a limited edition, you know, I think it's super cool. But that being said, do be aware that there are a few issues with them. Um, and I'll, I'll go over some of that stuff in the, uh, after I get this taken care of here. Uh, so mainly, I just have to undo that. I was just hoping to swap out the PCB instead because that would be easier. But I think I can manage here. I should get tweezers before I burn myself. There we go. So this PCB in particular is the one that was in my uh, IPS modded Game Boy Color. And the reason I took it out is because... I actually found something pretty darn cool inside this Game Boy Color and wanted to swap it out. Okay. Pin's just a little bit bent. And so this Game Boy Color uh, was actually a, um, like a whole Game Boy Color. It wasn't just a shell. And so I did, oop, I did swap out PCB and I'll do another video on that later uh, but what happened is this Game Boy Color came with a revision 06 PCB sorry for all this noise here and um, well I swapped that into my IPS modded Game Boy Color and that actually took care of that uh, that issue with the last column of pixels yeah, like, like I said, I'll, I'll do a video on that at some point. I just want to get this one ready to do a video with. Because I've got another backlight kit here. All right. It's just kind of weird that it comes with these... Uh, I don't want to say the wrong screws, but they're obviously not OEM screws. So let's fix that. go over a couple quick things. Uh, maybe I will make this video listed if I just not right away. But um because there are a couple issues with this shell. I want to say like if you're looking for a legit OEM Game Boy Color that's this edition, um, I want to point out a few things to look out for. Now I don't have a legitimate one of this edition to compare it to. But the biggest red flag is uh, this IR window right here. You can see it's just gray plastic. It's not even opaque. Compare it to an OEM one. And you can see the OEM one's darker. It's, uh, it's IR transparent, but you know to the naked eye, you can't see through it. 
unfortunately. Now I suppose if one is reshelling a Game Boy Color they could just use the original IR window instead of the gray one that it comes with. Another thing, go ahead and take a look at the power switch here. Uh, the one on my right here is an OEM power switch. The one on the left is the replacement one. You can see it's it's not quite there. It's not all there. It works perfectly fine. It feels fine. It's just, you know, it's visually different if you take a look at it. So we're going to use the OEM one. Uh, obviously, these screws are different, but you can't tell that from the outside. Uh, one thing that you can tell from the outside, and uh, we'll get there in a second. I want to peel this plastic off. Probably shouldn't, but and yeah, we'll just swap the whole thing out. Eh, nah, that's fine. I'll leave it, but I do got to take these screws out. So yeah, like I was saying, I'm completely fine with these existing. My problem is when people try and sell them as legit. That's interesting. Okay. And I'll just swap it out. It's probably better. Sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. I keep going to say something, and then I'm like, oh, let me just do this real quick. There we go. Oh, no. I think I just stripped out that hole. Oh, no. Yeah, I did. <laughs> No, we're not going to use these screws. This uh, screw post here cracked when I tried to put that screw in. I can hardly see it, but... That's okay. And I know I literally just got done saying my problem with these shells is when people try and fool other people. But the difference in this case is I'm not selling this. I'm just making a video. Okay. That's fine. this bad boy back together and we should be good to go. Now the question is, never mind, I already answered it. Out. So here's another thing, if you're like looking at auctions for these things, if it looks too clean, like if it looks no one has ever inserted a cartridge into the console or you know it looks like they've only done it once or twice that should be a red flag there um unless it's literally new in box which i know at some point they're going to start making some uh convincing looking boxes for these things i think but um not yet but yeah, if, it, if it's not new in box, you know, if it looks like it has brand new labels, which this one does, and if it looks like there's no scratching on the cart area, which, again, is true for this one as well, then uh, that should be a red flag there. 
Another thing I've never seen on any of these aftermarket shells is if you look into the battery compartment, right between these two screws is another screw looking thing. That is the uh, potentiometer for adjusting the uh, voltage to the LCD, which is something that you want to tweak anytime you swap out OEM LCDs. Um, I'm not going to bother even though this screen is not married to this motherboard because I'm just going to swap out the screen a little bit anyway. But um, on OEM Game Boy Colors, there's a cover here. On this aftermarket shell, there's no cover. So take a look here. I mean, it's just a little adhesive piece of... Um, is it plastic or is it paper? I mean, either way. You got it there. You don't have it here. Uh, batteries, of course. This terminal looks new because it is. So yeah, just, I don't know. I'm trying to go over things. Like if you're looking, holy shit, that's not even screwed down. Looking at a new auction or something. But just keep an eye out. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is. Okay, and it helps if all the screws are actually tightened, huh? I was afraid of overdoing them, but didn't even do them enough. Okay. So I have no doubt that someone out there has already purchased one of these cases and is trying to scam someone with it, but I still think they're pretty cool for personal use. That's better. One last thing. If you're looking at one of these, you have it in person. If you're looking at one of these in person, you have it in hand, easiest way to tell is if the D-pad presses down. Like, if you can press all four directions at the same time. You can't do that on OEM Game Boy Colors. It's not how Game Boy OEM Game Boy Colors work. You can press, of course, and I'm showing you like that. Is doing that but it's not actually triggering all four directions it's only going to trigger two at once it kind of rocks back and forth whereas this one you can trigger all four directions at once that's not how uh, that's not how Game Boy Colors are supposed to work so it's it's kind of hard to see on video um, but if you have it in your hand you can definitely tell otherwise man this is a really nice case oh yeah now I am going to go beat this thing up and just put a little bit of wear on it. Literally going to sit there with a cartridge doing this for 20 minutes. No. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to beat it up a little just to make it a little bit more fun. But, oh, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, cool fact, it even has the right sticker on it that says Game Freak. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. All right, so I was sitting there thinking about what I had done. I was looking at my uh, IPS Game Boy Color, and I was looking at the screen going, gee, that looks like it's curved up, and I realized that's because it kind of is. Uh, when I put the other PCB into this Game Boy, I forgot to trim both the uh, cart slot and the battery terminal thing, so... Um, yeah, that kind of sticks up, <laughs> but that also means the uh, Game Boy Color motherboard in that limited edition shell is already trimmed for install into this thing, so uh, I'm going to have to swap that out regardless, but just a little teaser here. You can see there's no more corruption of those pixels, um, but yeah, that's for another time. I've got to take that apart. I had what is either the worst or best idea I've ever had. <laughs> um, in this bag, I have a box. Inside this box, let me stop wrestling with the bag for a second. Uh, I put it in the bag because I noticed some screws and shit were falling out and I didn't want to have to track these all over my apartment. 
but inside this box is that Game Boy Color and all the screws and shit from my junk slash knickknacks drawer. So um, hopefully that did a little bit of something to uh, make this look a little bit more lived in. And I've literally just been shaking it around. Um, doesn't look too bad, but it certainly doesn't look brand new. This, I did just a little quick, couple quick passes of sandpaper. I'm going to have to um, do something on that to make it a little bit less rough, but that's okay. I think it worked out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside here. So the problem, let's go and take this apart. And yeah, I realized this while I was looking at my uh, IPS Game Boy Color. And it was kind of a uh, duh moment. And I would have been pretty much in the middle of my other video and I would have been like, oh, well, duh, spoiler, damn. But it's okay. Because I have another solution. Something that never occurred to me until now. I don't know why it never occurred to me. Because it's so damn obvious in hindsight. But let me get this apart. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I probably should have made sure there was no screws stuck in. Okay. I'll just leave those in there. They're not going anywhere. So aside from the fact that this PCB has been very obviously recapped, which is perfectly fine, just not really what I wanted to go for. The um, I already undid that third pin audio mod, or whatever the hell it is. The biggest giveaway would have been that. <laughs> the staining around the uh, A and B and D pad and the uh, trimmed card slot. So, whoops. Um, yeah, I'll just leave this out for now. I got to use it for my other video anyway, so there's no sense putting it inside a Game Boy. But what I am going to do is take the other Game Boy that I've been keeping at my desk um, to test those uh, backlight kits. We'll just take the motherboard from this thing. And uh, no one will be the wiser. Except all 12 of you that watch this video. But it's okay, I'll put it back eventually. I've had this stupid thing apart so many times now. Really, I should just leave it apart before I ruin the uh, screw holes. I don't know how many mating cycles this is good for, but I'm talking about like the metal screws in the plastic shell. I don't know how many mating cycles that's good for, but I'm, it's got to be nearing its limit at some point. I've had this Game Boy Color apart more than any other Game Boy Color I own. Which is a shame, you know, because... I actually really like this shell. I just it just so happened to be the one I grabbed and I've been using the same one since. Anyway, okay, here we go. Got a perfectly stock, unmodified <laughs> Game Boy Color motherboard. It is a little bit yellowed, but so it very obviously came from a transparent model, which it did. But I think we're going to be okay. I'll have to put a rubber band or something around this. Or, here's a better idea. I've got plastic baggies. So this thing clearly needs a motherboard, but that's fine. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and one, two, three. Okay, 
that back together and I'm done with the other motherboard. All right. something for that literally on my desk because I never clean up oh my god there's a lot of hair on this thing though that's super gross I'm gonna actually go clean this up I'll be back right I think this is getting a little bit ridiculous but here we go um, for those curious I just cleaned this off literally with soap and water and then let it air dry. And I am installing it again, just to rip it out in a few minutes, but that's okay. This is an actual OEM screen gasket. And the only purpose that this thing serves is to keep dust out of the uh, LCD. And it's not very good at that job. Once the, uh, yeah, and as you can see, it's not nearly as sticky as it should be anymore either. Once you break that seal the first time, it's never going to go back to how it was. Especially once you uh, take off half the adhesive by trying to clean it. Okay. Yeah, because once the PCB is installed, it does a pretty good job of holding the screen in place. But I guess since we've got it this far down, let me take a second to talk about the D-pad. So the problem earlier is that that little nubbin in the middle doesn't stick out as much as it needs to. You can modify that. You can rectify that by, um, uh, you, know, you, you can like shave it down a little bit and then drill a hole, put a screw in there. But, yeah, and I actually just had a thought here. Let's use some OEM pads too, huh? Not even going to clean them. There we go. Nothing wrong with these ones in particular. Just, uh, you know, I'm putting all this work in for a, uh, for a joke. Might as well not skip anything, right? in that's happy I lost a screw stuck to the speaker good thing I checked <laughs> okay after this I've only got to take this thing apart one more time to you know do everything over again, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Just, just hold on. Actually, time is kind of weird because uh, you're almost pretty much guaranteed to be watching this video after I've already modified this thing, so... You know, you already know how that turns out. If it's a train wreck, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll stop myself from I don't know.
All right. Let's double check. Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of tight with those batteries. Holy shit. <laughs> that's, uh, it's not okay. All right, so clearly I need to adjust the contrast on the screen. It's terrible, but otherwise, I think we're uh, good to go. Oh, oh backlit, so... I'd say that's pretty good. All right. I will see you guys in the past slash future. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo.